So this is part two of a three-part series with our former client, Steve Wilt, a financial services manager from Akron, Ohio. He's uh, in his late 50s. And if you watched part one, it was a future self-meditation. I hope it was powerful for you. And in this video, Steve's now going to talk about how he stopped drinking, share a little bit more of his story, share a couple of before and after photos and the impact that he's been able to make in his own firm now and in his family and in his community as a result of being alcohol-free. Part three is coming up uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe in a couple of days' time, uh, where he'll be talking about how moderation is a myth, or at least moderation was a myth for him, and uh, talking about his journey beyond one year alcohol-free. But for now, enjoy part two of this of this three-part series, I should say, how Steve stopped drinking and the immense benefits and impact he created because of that. There are three versions of ourselves, and there's three versions of how people see us Right? There's a lot of people that want the old Steve or the old Paul. Right? They want the old drinking buddy. They miss me. And they are comfortable with that person. Now for me, almost all my friends are over that. They're, they get it. Right? But it took a while for them to get there. And then there's people that appreciate the current version of you and they just are happy with you. Right? But every now and then you meet people that are looking for the future version, your best self, that call you forward, that challenge you to be better than you are today. And those people are in this room. Or we do that with each other, right? And those people I seek out. I want people to challenge me to be better. And when you find those people, um, I would embrace them, make them part of your inner circle because they're so impactful in your life, right? So I will share my story, just a timeline. In May of 2019, I went on a, on a retreat with Dominic to design the next 10 years of our life. And at the end of the retreat, it's one of those things where everybody has an epiphany. And somebody's going to reconcile with their son and somebody else is going to change their careers. And, and I sat there with my eyes closed trying to share this. And what I shared was when I get with my poker buddies, I drink too much. I didn't share that I had a problem. I didn't share that I had addiction. The six guys in the room knew that's what was going on, but I couldn't get myself to say it. But it was the first time that I started to realize, hey, there's something going on here, right? And I need to do something about it. And then in March of 2020, I joined this mastermind where I learned you know, breath work and meditation and all these things and morning routines, and it started to enhance my life and get me to the next level. And then COVID hit, of course, and then in May of 2020, I did the meditation that we just went through. But of course, it was COVID, so it was a virtual immersion. So I was in my basement, I was hungover, and I did that, like as opposed to showing up to that immersion as my best self for a, a, an event called The Great Man Within, I showed up, hungover, and my great man told me, you'll never be me if you don't quit drinking. But I didn't quit, right, it was COVID, I started drinking more. The stress was building, there were things going on with my kids, I was out of my mind, and I just kept picking up, picking up, and picking up steam. Then in February of 21, I heard a saying, using despite, no, the definition of addiction, using despite knowing there'll be negative consequences. And of course, again, I was hungover. I thought, well, that's me. Maybe I do have an addiction, right? And then in March of 21, I joined a different group called I Am A Comeback. Anybody familiar with that one? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I Am A Comeback is a group that is all about willpower. It's only men, it's all tough guys on their retreats, they're flipping tires and shooting guns. Um, but it's none of the science, none of the dopamine, none of the addictive nature is. It's all about alcohol, it's just like ketchup. You can give up ketchup, can't you? Why can't you give up alcohol? And I went 90 days without drinking and I felt so good, I kept going. I went eight months. But in that group, you got the choice between abstinence or control. And I chose control. And they said at some point, if you want to have some wine in Tuscany or you want to drink at your daughter's wedding, that's okay. So on my anniversary that fall, I consciously decided to drink and start exercising control. And I put a plan together, a written plan. And I am a person that creates plans and finishes plans. I was committed to this. I was going to exercise control. And I did for months. 
ended up going to nationals in tennis and actually winning it. My partner and I went 11 and 0, like as opposed to just going and losing. First time I went to nationals, by the way, I hit some vodka in my suitcase because <laughs> my coach didn't want us drinking, but I took a little just so I'd have it. Um, and everybody had a beer afterwards, and I took one sip, threw them out of way. Like I was exercising control. Thanksgiving, I had one glass of wine with the cousins. Right? Like, how did that happen? Even that night, I went with the plan. Just going to have a little wine, going to have one martini. Nope. Still regret that to this day. So I took another four months off, tried to exercise control again. All right, and took another four months off, and then I decided in the summer to exercise control again until I had a similar outcome. A little worse this time, actually. I won't even share it with you. Just embarrassing, drunken stories, right? That we've all had. <clears throat> and then, September 26, I joined Project 90. And I came into Project 90 um, fully deciding. Oh. I want to use it on the computer here. Okay. Because <clears throat> I had to plug in the computer to, uh, yeah, so just use okay. it there. There we go. Thanks. And I decided uh, at that time I was going to make a decision, right? I had to figure this out once and for all. Either I was going to drink or I wasn't going to drink. And I joined almost every call. And as busy as we all are, man, I put it on my calendar. I poloed all the time. I listened to the videos. I did everything because I just wanted to conquer this piece one way or another. And on day 45, after all of these classes with Victoria and Sarah and James, uh, it happened to be Sarah that night. She was going through dopamine, the effects on your brain, the effects of addiction. It hit me like a ton of bricks that this had happened to me. And while I'm responsible for my own actions, it's an addictive poison. It was modeled for me by my family my whole life. It's been glamorized in everything we look at. All the guards are stacked against you in this. And I got really angry. And I decided I'm never drinking again. And I made a polo about it. I got on and told everybody in Project 90, I'm angry, this is what happened, and I'm never drinking again. And I believe that for me and for most of us, until you say it out loud, it's not true, right? Because you can always go back on it if you don't tell somebody. If it's just a deal with you, like I'm only gonna have two on Friday, if you don't have an accountability partner. So I said it out loud and a cool thing happened. A few others followed suit. Not everybody, but some jumped on and said, I'm not, I'm, this is it for me too. But it was a breakthrough moment. And ever since then, my mind's been clear. I've known, I'm done. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Right, the energy, the whole James Clear Atomic Habits, it's much easier to make one big decision than a different decision every day. I just don't have to worry about it. It's such a blessing. Um, but it takes time. And if you're in Project 90, you still have to make that decision, right? And when you do, you don't have to tell people. You don't have to tell everybody, like I am now. <laughs> but, you know, I told my wife that night too. This is it. Um, but I didn't go tell my friends and family that night. Eventually I did. And the outcomes at 15 months, you know, my journey's been three years since the first time I started this. I went eight months, four months, so in 15 months, whatever that adds up to, I got about 30 months alcohol free with some pieces in there. Energy, focus, self-confidence. I'm no longer a prisoner, no dirty secrets. I am a man of faith, um, and I saw you know, different hands go up and that's fine, but I was, uh, after COVID, we didn't go to mass as much. And um, we went back to mass one time after I decided to quit. And in the Catholic faith, you take the Eucharist, the bread, don't take the wine anymore. And that's when you're the clearest, the cleanest to God. And I always pray at that time. And I thank, give grat, you know, gratefulness, and I pray for my kids. And in a rote prayer, what I didn't even realize, I prayed in mass that day, help me with my alcohol. And I hadn't drank in like six months, but I realized I was doing that for 10 years. I was praying that in mass. And I just started crying. And my wife's looking at me like, why are you crying? Because this prayer that I've been praying all these years, I've finally accomplished. So now I'm closer in my faith, right? I'm closer to God because of that. Relationships, of course. 
weight, skin, nails, voice, eyes, hair. I was telling some of the ladies last night, for like the last month, my wife keeps saying, you have more hair. <laughs> and I'll show you some pictures, it's crazy, <laughs> right? Like my body is rejuvenating itself. Over the years, people have told me I have a great voice, but I haven't heard it in years. And since I quit drinking, four or five times now people have said it to me on phone calls. Like my voice is getting stronger because I'm not poisoning my voice every night, right? Business, of course. Golf and tennis, I shared about tennis. Um, so breaking 70 is a big deal in golf. And I did it when I was young, but I haven't done it in 15 years. I've become alcohol free, nothing changes. I don't take any more lessons. I don't do any more work. I'm just waking up bright eyed, I'm getting to the range. And I go out and I shoot 69 at a tournament, which I've never sniffed it before in a tournament, being alcohol free. But there's so many things you can point to where the only difference, the only variable, is that you're not drinking anymore and these things are happening. Self-love. It was 16 months today, actually, it was the 26th, and I just feel unstoppable. So this is my little before and after. I don't think I was horrible here, right? But the difference is pretty startling to me. I'm just brighter. Mm -hmm. And then there's the outcomes we don't talk about. So there's, there's three that I'm thinking of here and, and things that we don't talk about in public. And it's not politics or religion. What three things don't we talk about with each other in our society? Any guesses? Sex. Pardon? Sex. Sex is one of them. <laughs> yes, absolutely. What else? Um, that is one. I, I, I mentioned no politics or religion. So, yep. Fear, yep. emotion. Fear. Pardon? Fear, emotion. Fear, emotion. Those are things we don't talk about a lot. Your vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities are definitely one, which I love to be vulnerable, and I think it makes really powerful. So the three I'm thinking of are sex, money, and death. It's almost taboo to talk about money in our society, or sex, or death, right? But think about these three things when it comes to being alcohol free. Money is an easy one. I mean, twenty dollars a day in alcohol, it's seventy five hundred. Thirty dollars a day, it's ten grand. And then take it up from there. If you like great wine, like I did, it's a lot more. If you host parties, it's a lot more. If you go out, it's a lot more. It just keeps stacking up. And then if you make mistakes, right? You break something. You wreck something. If you do have better skin and brighter eyes and more hair. <laughs> If you have lost weight, if you're in the best shape of your life, if you're more attentive, if you're cleaning the garage and getting the coffee, if you're meeting your partner's needs all the time outside the bedroom, right? And then you come to bed and you're not a drunken fool. Sex should get better, right? I mean, if we could just put that on a billboard, James, we could. <laughs> what drives people more? Money and sex are huge benefits of this that we don't talk about. And the last one is death. Or we've discovered the fountain of youth. It's not what you put in your chalice, it's what you don't put in your chalice. It's the fact that we're not drinking alcohol that gives us the fountain of youth. I feel 10 to 15 years younger. And I keep feeling younger. My wife is calling me Benjamin Button. <laughs> she can't believe the changes that are happening with me. And I can't believe them either. Right, and sharing that with people, it's crazy. And that's what happens. And it was mentioned, people saying, Paul mentioned it, oh, wait a minute. So this is me and my wife, Holly, our lovely wife. And this is me at one of our trips for our firm in Cabo at the end of three days of drinking nonstop. And, you know, again, I don't think I look horrible, but, you know, that's just the way it is. And this is me at our kickoff, right? And nobody was saying to me, Hey, you gotta do better. Hey, you gotta stop drinking. Hey, if you did this, this would happen. But I think she deserves this guy. Not this guy. Yeah, what's that? She looks better than you, not for sure. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> she does, for sure. Yeah, I don't deserve her. Here I kinda do, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but my kids deserve this guy. My friends and family deserve this guy. My company deserves this guy. My team deserves this guy. My church deserves it. You deserve this guy, not the other guy. And they des you deserve, your people that you care about deserve the best version of you too. 
right? And it feels good to deliver that person. This is a talk I gave last year, 660 people at our firm, and I'm giving the closing talk. It was a great honor to me. One of the favorite things I've ever done. And I wanted to share that I was alcohol free in this talk. And I discussed it with my wife and she was really concerned about it. Like you're gonna come out to your whole company. But I had Evan Melcher on my panel. Does anybody know Evan? Yeah. Went through P90, great guy, works at our firm. And I talked to Evan about it. And I said, Evan, when I introduce you, I'd like to introduce you as a leader, so much so that you did a LinkedIn post, which he did at One Year Alcohol Free. They got 42,000 comments, not likes, comments, 42,000. And Evan agreed, loved the idea. So I introduced him a whole bunch of accolades, and then I told that piece. And then I said, and as a matter of fact, I've chosen to live an alcohol free life too in front of my entire firm. And I said to my wife, I can just help one person. If one person hears it and makes a difference, it'll be worth it. And there's somebody in this room that it helps, and it's Lauren. Awesome. Lauren, anything you want to share? Sure. Um, Steve, I think you're too modest in, <laughs> in talking about what a leader you are in our firm. And, um, you know, I won't, I won't say more, but you've won awards. And I had a connection with you because remember, we were on a panel together, mm -hmm. we moderated a panel when I was on the yes. panel. Yes. Like one year before this kickoff, we were did it virtually. So I felt connected enough to Steve to like really hear what he said and realize that, like, yeah, you know, I'm kind of angry too that the world is pointing us in this direction. And, you know, it didn't, it didn't all sink in right away, but I think we all know that we, we never know what we say is going, how what we say is going to land on someone and really make a difference for them. And I'm sure there are, I'm sure there are other people, and there were hundreds of people in the room, you see like Steve's in front of purple lights and, you know, with microphones, it was a very produced event. And um, it was really, really meaningful and really great. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I will never forget it. Thank you. Neither will I. No, made it all worth it, right? Um, and I remember when Lauren called me, I don't know if it was weeks or months later, um, and just having that conversation, knowing that I got to somebody, right? And maybe I can help somebody. And there's so many others have come up to me. One comment, one statement, right? So <clears throat> this has helped me clarify my purpose in life. There are lots of introspection and you know, sharing my story to help others is one. I'm also a big advocate for diversity, equity, and inclusion and social justice, uh, two areas that I'm spending a ton of time. And now that I've seen it, I can't unsee it. Now that I know, I can't stop, right? Uh, a guy in our group, Jordan, uh, you know, used the matrix analogy that once Neo took the blue pill, all of a sudden he could see it. Like once you take the blue pill, once you know, now you know, and what are you gonna do with it? Um, and I started helping people through attraction, not promotion. So to the comment, people would come up and say, man, you look good. You look younger. You've lost weight, right? All these different things that people started saying to me. And I just started kind of walking through the door They say, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, the normal stuff, you know, nutrition, exercise. Oh, and I'm, I'm alcohol free. And you see their head snap. What? And when they say, oh, I should do that or I should take a break. Like, oh, if you wanna to get together, I'd be happy to get together. And many take you up on it, and many aren't ready and they don't. And if they do, I might send them a podcast that I did with James, or find a way to help them. So if they reach out a little bit, because we know they're not ready, they're not ready. So I've got people who have said it four or five times to me in drunken situations. Yeah. Boy, I wanna to get together with you. I text them the next day, crickets, yeah. you know? But eventually, right? They'll come around. Um, and the way I look at it is if I really care about somebody, I, I should send them a life preserver, right? But I'm not gonna be out there saying, you should quit drinking. I do think we're in an alcohol revolution. I won't spend a lot of time here, but, you know, the other day in the NFL playoffs, there was this Guinness Zero commercial. All these Guinness beers singing. NA bars, there's an NA bar in Cleveland. Like if it's got all the way to Cleveland, not just LA, <laughs> you know it's coming, man. Um, so yeah, ways to help. Just 
And again, uh, I want to be really clear. This might not be for you. And if you're new in your journey, it's definitely probably not for you. It takes time to get to this point where you're comfortable sharing your story. It does. And you might never get there, and that's okay. As long as you remain alcohol-free, that's all that matters. But eventually, people are going to tell you how good you look. They're going to have these questions. These are all $64,000 questions. And some people end up going through Project 90. Others end up becoming alcohol-free. And some were just starting the journey. So I do think we're a pebble in still water, right? I know that's not a pebble, it's a drop, but you know, when you drop a pebble in still water, it just goes and goes and goes, right? And if we help one and they help another and they help another, and I don't wanna be a pebble. I don't wanna be a rock, I don't wanna be a boulder. I wanna be an avalanche. I wanna be a asteroid that lands and tsunamis all over. I wanna help as many people as we can with this addiction, this vile beast, this poison. Right? And if I can do that in my way, I'm going to do it. So there's some more proactive things that I've done, posting on social media, did a podcast with James that some of you may have listened to. Um, I'm considering my own podcast. And more recently, with my firm, I've started the Cap Trust Alcohol Free Challenge. And HR signed off on this, and we did a 31-day alcohol challenge. It's in the middle of it right now, weekly sessions. Victoria was our first speaker. Then James, Sarah's going to speak, Evan Melcher's going to speak. Um, so we invited people to abstain for 31 days. It's very non-threatening. 19% of Americans do dry January anyway. And then we invite them to go 90 days, and that's coming up. We had almost 400 people, 25% of the firm signed up. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. They get points in the little uh, health app of ours. They get a cash reward if they make it all the way. People are commenting in the chats on our weekly sessions. I'm getting emails from people. Got one just yesterday. The top advisor in Boston said, hey, I wanna let you know at our, our big kickoff, a bunch of us were toasting you as we drank our soda, water, and lime at the advisor kickoff, which is usually a huge drink fest. And he said, I don't know if I'm gonna go 30 days or 90 days or, or three years. In his email, he just said this, but I know I felt better than I have in a long time, and this has been eye-opening. And I told Coach Victoria that last night, and she said, you know, what they don't know is we've ruined drinking for all of them going forward. <laughs> now that they know, I loved it, Coach. And it might not take now. It took me three years. But if we just get them realizing how good they can feel and that it's okay and that others are going down this path, it can make a massive change. So this has been really fun and really exciting but now I think, oh, it works for my company. I've got 90 clients at our companies. Maybe I do a webinar on this new benefit that you can give your employees through your HR team. Right? Maybe we do a firm-wide webinar if I can get the firm there. Maybe we share with 3,000 companies. Maybe this becomes something new that companies offer across the planet. And if you're not using it, then you're behind the times. So it's just one idea I have, but they're flowing. So I'm not sure what's next for you, but this is, a, this is a Bible verse that I live my life by. And I have for many years, do not neglect the gift that is in you. And I've always thought, if I can use my public speaking for good, if I can use my leadership skills or mentorship skills for philanthropy or for good, but now that I have this gift, the way we started this conversation, I would be remiss if I didn't use it for good. I have no choice but to start helping more and more people. Um, so I will say, I do think we're lucky. I think we're chosen. And I do think with great gifts come great responsibilities. 